bakery is called Arsico. That's the last name of my great grandparents. And they owned a bakery in France 100 years ago. And there are two bakeries in that street. And the one that used to be my great grandparents is still the better one. So it's a very important name for us. It's something I want to, uh, to take care of. And uh, I made the jump six years ago and uh, opened the bakery. We were extremely lucky that Bon Appetit magazine decided we were the best new bakery in America in 2016. And uh, my life changed uh, from that day on. My grandparents used to take us to La Bourne. It's in Brittany. And that's where, when I was 13, for the first time, I discovered that thing called the Queen Emma. And, you know, right away I could tell this caramel is sweet and buttery. I tried one and it was uh, quite a revelation. The Queen Amman, it's in the, the dialect of Brittany. Uh, it means butter cake. Originally, a baker had some leftover bread dough. I said, well, you know, let me see what I can do. But I added some butter and some sugar. And the Queen Amman was born. Today what we do is we use our croissant dough and our croissant dough you know, has a reputation of being very flaky and it is because we give the dough an extra turn. So we have three times as many layers. So we roll out the dough. We spread some butter, melted butter. Then we add some sugar. We roll it. We cut slices, we take them, we dip them in butter and then sugar again and put that in the mold, which of course has been, you know, brushed with butter. I'm very preoccupied with uh, caramelization versus crystallization. So the baking process is very important, getting the right temperature, getting the right balance between sugar and butter. I can tell people, oh, this is a very balanced pastry. There's a lot of sugar, but you know, it's balanced with a lot of butter. So, you know, I think the best way to eat the Queen of Man is make sure nobody's watching and, you know, go for it. No shame. A little messy, yes, but, you know, we, uh, we, we don't apologize too much. So, Faith, how did you find this absolutely delectable pastry? Oh, my gosh. I... I'm having trouble thinking of a time I did not know or have this pastry in my life, but really I had heard about it from a coworker who had been raving about the croissants at this place. She said it was the best that she'd ever tried outside of France and she is French. So I trusted her advice very much. So I went in and the croissant looked good, but then I'd seen the Queen Amon and I was so excited to try it. And it was love at first bite, just like the fluffy plus the crunchy plus the sugar, just all my favorite textures and flavors in one dish. <laughs> and how do you eat it? It's hard to eat very daintily because of so many of the layers and the flakiness. Mm -hmm. The other day I was trying to sneakily eat one in the car and it was not a great look. Um, because it's in a swirl pattern, I kind of like to pick a little bit of a spiral and try to savor it that way. But otherwise, just a big old chomp. <laughs> Well, I saw Chip laughing and, and shaking his head. Did you enjoy the Queen Amman? Uh, I did. How did you eat it? I am a flaker. I like to flake it off and just see the beautiful layers sort of fall away and just look at the delicateness of it. And it just, you're amazed at how they make this wonderful flakiness happen. It, it also makes it last longer. <laughs> A hundred percent. Right. So Rachel, tell us about your experience. So I initially started biting into it and I thought, oh, this is just like a croissant, right? But I went a little further and realized not only is there caramelized croissant dough in there, but the center was a little more dense. So I kind of coined a little term for it and kind of called it a dosant, like a mix between a donut <laughs> a and a croissant. So, you know, it wasn't too overpoweringly sweet. So I thought it was good. It was really interesting because when I walked in, they had this beautiful case, very clear glass case laid in front of you. And the very first pastry was the Queen of Mon. They know what their specialties are. And I'll tell you, I was so captivated by its golden crispiness. I don't think I even noticed anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of called my name. <laughs> 
And in terms of getting anything else, Rachel, did you indulge? Or? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we did not mess around. We did get, um, it was an onion and bacon quiche, which was excellent. And do you have another favorite faith? Yes. I mean, of course, the regular croissants is what made them famous. You know, I particularly love the almond croissant. I think that they do. I think it's frangipani at the bottom. That's just like, it's so tasty. They also have a morning bun. Sometimes, you know, if it was going to be a particularly rough week, I would grab some pastries and then some like little cookies to share with my coworkers. Well, you're very nice because I don't know that I would share them. So yeah. you're very nice. <laughs> I think for me, my stomping ground is usually the Arguello location off of Clement. And I think parking is usually the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. But then once you find it, the lines aren't too bad if you're there before noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went to the McAllister location and uh, we didn't have a line. Luckily, we got there about mid-morning and I actually got to meet Armando and he was very excited to share with us how they cook everything, what's in the ingredients. And so I was very impressed on his hospitality there as well. All right. You'll find the Queen Amon and more at Arsicole, which has two locations in San Francisco. The original is on Arguello Street and the newest cafe is on McAllister Street. Faith's pro tip, grab a few croissants for the road too.